Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This is Eisenerz and last weekend I had the privilege to participate in the European CDH Championships in Lisbon and here is my short recap. For the last year I've been playing TNK in tournaments with some decent success. I made top 16 and top 4, but I honestly didn't feel the deck. It's great of course, but no placing or win gave me the same satisfaction I feel when playing Urza. Additionally, playing an S tier deck used to put a lot of pressure on me because I would expect myself to make top placings every time. This was a feeling I didn't enjoy at all and with the recent bannings of Dockside Crypt and JLo, I just decided to play Urza at the Heroes. It's definitely a B tier deck, but I know it much better, enjoy Paladin much more and I feel way less stressed when bringing it to tournaments because I don't expect too much from it. Unfortunately, I had almost no time to properly prepare for the Euros. Ideally, I would have played 100 plus games with competitive rules enforcement in preparation for this event, but all in all I maybe got like 10 to 20 games in, most of which were with friends in a more casually competitive setting. I was just way too busy with work and my family. Some of you might already know that I'm going to become a father again in a few months, and unfortunately we're going through a high risk pregnancy, which of course makes it really hard for me to spend a lot of time and energy preparing for an event. All in all, I just worked on a very mid-range and combo-focused Urza decklist that is able to grind tons of value and combo off from multiple angles with as little as a single tutor. I cut all the stacks because I'm still convinced that stacks isn't viable in tournament settings anymore. I added some more creature removal and called it a day. Very little testing, yet the deck did what I was expecting it to do and now that the tournament is over, I feel confirmed in my approach to go for a stacksless mid-range build. Kaka and the whole CDH Portugal team did a really great job with organizing this event. I want to emphasize how much I and all the other participants appreciate what they put together for us. The venue was great, we had a large main room with vendors, a large lobby to chill out and chat a little, the weather was incredibly nice and we were able to grab food really close by. It was just the perfect setting to play a lot of games, meet tons of players and hang out with friends from all over the world. I met Kaka, Firlo, Pontus, Veil of Death, Max P, Poncho, the champ himself, Tramnak, Gedish, who's another passionate Urza player, Ellen from Mental Misstep, lots of Germany's finest CDH players, and of course, so many other great people that all had a part in making this event such a great experience. Honestly, the only thing I disliked about the whole weekend were the long waiting times between rounds, because of overtime. I think we had a total of roughly 7 hours of overtime in Swiss rounds, which could be fixed for example with straightforward 80 minute rounds and an additional 10 minutes for the active player to finish their turn. But that's a topic for another video. Let's now have a quick look at my games from the main event and the side event. Game 1 was Kinnan, Kinnan, Magda, Urza. I kept Solid Hand with some fast mana, Forensic Gadgeteer and some interaction. Unfortunately, on turn 2, player 2 took an illegal game action by casting Agatha's Soul Cauldron and following up with Kinnan by using Emergence Zone. We specifically pointed this out, but he was very convincing in explaining that Soul Cauldron allows him to use colorless mana for pips. I didn't second guess him there, but second guess myself for not playing Cauldron if that was what it does. Well, this illegal game action led to player 3 not blowing up player 1's Mana Dork on turn 2, which allowed player 3 to have exactly enough mana to go for the win on turn 3. When player 2 himself noticed his illegal game action and we called a judge, it was already too late for a rewind and player 1 was able to win off of that mistake. I had a turn 3 win in hand, but unfortunately the game ended before that. Game 2 was Urza, Roxai, Roxai, Malcolm, Vile. I kept a mediocre hand of 5 with some fast mana, but I luckily top decked a fish. The game went on for 7 turns, during which I was able to steal a Talion and control the board with my Walking Ballista, but unfortunately the game went into overtime and ended in a draw right before I was able to win with Hullbreaker Horror. Game 3 was Roxai, TNK, Rakdos and Urza. I kept a medium hand with some fast mana and interaction, but player 1 just had the most insane game. They were able to cast a turn 1 Floodcaller and resolve a turn 2 Necro, which gave them an easy turn 3 win. Just Roxai doing Roxai things. Game 4 was Roxai, Rock Tavesh, Urza and Kess. I kept a Soul Tent with some fast mana and a fish. Player 1 also started with a fish. On turn 2 they cast tons of fast mana and were able to resolve a turn 3 Bola Citadel into a defense grid followed up by a Wishclaw Talisman. I was the only one to have interaction in hand but unfortunately my miscast wasn't able to deal with any of those artifacts. And again, Rockside side doing Rockside side things, even without Darkside and Mana Crypt. Game 5 was Rockside, Winota, Urza and Ajila. 
I kept a slower hand of 5 with mana drain, aiming to use the mana for a temple play and to ramp into Urza, but I never really got there. Player 1 opened with a fish, and player 2 followed up with a turn 2 Archon of Emiria, locking player 1 and 4 out of the game for the most part. I was able to remove player 2's Winota once, but they quickly recast her, and unfortunately neither player 1 nor player 4 were able to deal with Winota, and from then on it just snowballed like Winota does, if undisrupted. It took some time of course, but the lock was too much for all of us, and player 2 eventually won on turn 7 or 8. Game 6 was TNT, Urza, Yuriko and Rock Thrasios. I kept a solid hand with some fast mana, reality chip and flood caller. On turn 1 we all deployed some fast mana. On turn 2 player 1 cast a study and I followed up with Urza and the reality chip. Player 3 started spinning with Yuriko and on turn 3 player 3 removed my Urza, despite player 1 and player 4 having much stronger board states, shutting me off from using any of my artifacts for mana to potentially interact. They then continued swinging with Yuriko and some ninjas. On turn 4, player 1 set up for a win, but needed one more turn. I recast Urza, and player 3 goes for a lethal attack with Yuriko, to which player 4 responds with removal under the condition of a rematch, because stopping player 3 there would have kingmate player 1. We agree to a rematch and go to the rematch with 40 minutes on the clock. For the second game, I kept a hand with a turn 2 Rhystic study, which of course carried me through the whole game. Eventually we came to a point where player 4 and I could present wins at instant speed, but player 4 went for it before I did, so they fed player 1s and my Rhystic studies. I sent back my interaction like a madman, leaving most of it to player 1, and finally I stopped player 4's win attempt with a single counter spell. On my turn I had multiple options to win, but I luckily top decked a copy artifact, which I used to copy player 4's machine god's effigy, which was a cannon. With Basalt Monolith already in play, that gave me infinite mana to close out the game. Game 7 was Tayam, Magda, TNT and Urza. I kept a hand with some fast mana and early combo potential, but unfortunately I never got there. Magda dominated the game and cast a turn 4 Tangle Wire, which locked me out of the game. TNT however was unfazed and followed up with a Drana and Linvala, and on turn 5 they also cast a Culling Ritual and used the mana for Draneth Magistrate, Opposition Agent, Smothering Tithe and Survival of the Fittest. I was eventually able to copy the Opposition Agent, which stopped player 3, but only for a while. On turn 8, player 3 killed me with combat damage, and on turn 9 they were able to make infinite mana with Kinnon and Basalt. Well, that was the main event for me. 1-5-1 without any major mistakes except for game 1, and a deck that for the most part did what I was intending it to do. The biggest takeaway being that stacks doesn't work and I need more reps with the current list to adapt to the new meta and improve my mulligan decisions. And of course I joined a side event because I wanted to play as much as possible and that side event actually worked out a little bit better for me. Game 1 was Urza, Derevi, Ishai, Jeska and Roxai. I kept a hand with tons of fast mana and a turn 2 twister to refuel my hand, which worked out really well. On turn 3, player 4 went for a telegraph at NOS, but player 3 countered it and I convinced player 4 to not force me to use up more of my interaction because that at NOS was not going to resolve if he tried. He was persuaded by my masterful politics and on turn 4 I was able to deploy spells guide which ruined player 2's whole game because I basically blanked their commander. The game continued, I was able to grind tons of value with the one ring and on turn 7, with dramatic reversal on the stack to untap my mana sources and the one ring, I got silenced. My opponents let it resolve, allowing me to untap everything, I used my floating mana to transmute muddle the mixture for power artifact and pass the turn with an open emergence zone, almost 20 open mana, a full grip and a one ring that would draw me an additional 6 cards. Player 2 then began their turn, cast an uncounterable Kutzil, obviously going for the win, so I reacted by activating my ring, cracking emergence zone and winning on top of their Kutzil. GG. Game 2 was Lord Windgrace, Tim Nakodama, TNT and Urza. I kept a hand with a turn 1 fish, some interaction and combo pieces, but player 1 just had the most insane start with tons of fast mana and a sylvan library. They removed my fish with Poseju on turn 2 after only drawing me like 1-2 to two cards, they were then able to storm off through two pieces of interaction with Ad Nauseum into Unwilled Breach and then assemble some kind of landfall combo. Game 3 was Sisei, Toulouse, Urza and Najila. I had a hand with some fast mana and a fairy mastermind, but unfortunately my little draw engine got almost immediately killed by an orcish bowmaster. That bowmaster also removed an Esper Sentinel and Toulouse, 
eventually got copied by Mockingbird and wrecked Havoc on the board. Around turn 4, player 1 went for a win with Oracle into Tainted Pact, but player 2 forced a draw on us with a Pact of Negation. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough time for us to restart the round, so we took a draw. Game 4 was Tivit, Derevi, Sisse and Urza. This was a really great game. I opened with a pre-game gemstone and had some additional fast mana and fairy mastermind as well as reality chip in hand. Without any real turbo deck in the pot we took it a bit slower and I was able to ramp into turn 3 Urza and reality chip. On turn 4 player 1 followed up with Tivit and player 2 resolved a smothering tie. On turn 5 I was ready to storm off with reality chip. I cast a 1 ring from my top deck as well as a metamorph to copy the Tivit which gave me tons of mana and a huge blocker. Unfortunately Urza got removed before I could go crazy, so I had to pass my turn with a huge board state, multiple draw engines and a Tivit in play. Player 1 then resolved Time Thief on their turn and managed to get multiple extra turns by attacking player 2 and 3 repeatedly, all the while using their Fomori Vault to dig for a removal spell against my Tivit. Eventually they managed to find it, removed my Tivit and go for an extra turn with their last remaining artifacts. On their final turn, I asked player 2 and 3 if they were okay to draw the game, and they agreed because they were seeing what I saw. Player 1 didn't understand why I asked to draw when they were clearly winning and decided to attack me, not realizing that I still had protection from my earlier ring cast. Tivit's damage was prevented and player 1 didn't have enough artifacts for any extra turns, so we drew the game. Game 5 was TNK, Urza, Sisse and TNK. This game was a slugfest. Both player 1 and I mulled very low but could eventually resolve some draw engines. We got into the very late game and stopped multiple win attempts. With only 10 minutes on the clock I passed my turn, hoping it would get back to me in time, but everyone was able to present wins and the stack got huge every single time so that nobody was able to get their win attempt through. When the game was declared a draw, player 1 just passed back to me and although I had 2 win attempts in hand, my opponents had a total of 8 counter spells and removal pieces to stop me from comboing off. So again, the last game ended in a draw. Overall, the side event was a lot better for me than the main event. My deck did what I was intending it to do, I just need way more reps with it to make it perform at its highest level. I want to again thank Kaka, the judge team and all the players that were present for making this such a special event. This is a major milestone in the European CDH community and I'm happy to have been a part of it. I haven't had this much fun playing CDH in a really long time and I'm already looking forward to the 2025 European Championships in Germany. That being said, because of my wife's pregnancy and of course my responsibilities of being a father of two little boys very soon, I will most likely not be able to attend in-person events that require me to leave for multiple days anytime soon. I might be trying some online events again, if they are trustworthy and well organized, but until then I will focus mainly on my content and my other activities in this community. And that's it. As always, thank you for watching my videos. Make sure to like, share, comment and subscribe to support me and my channel. This is Eisenerz and Auf Wiedersehen.